This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Bingo! <laughs> <laughs> We're back the four o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. This is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. One of our longest running shows, actually. That is Sharon Moriwaki, co-host and co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. Aloha. And we have three segments today. Okay, one is Jim Kelly. He's that guy. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hi. He's Vice President of Corporate Relations of Hawaiian Electric Companies. We have Marvin Con uh, Wen Conseho. Uh, he's with Hawaii Energy. He's communications specialist there. And we have John Cole, HNEI. He's an assistant specialist. I'm some kind of going to find out <laughs> what he's specializing in. Yeah? Former PUC commissioner, by the way. So, Jim, I, first I want to tell you, thank you very much for the support you gave us when we went last Thursday. Uh, Hawaiian Electric uh, provided two people to help us on the trip. We, it was organized by Fred Riddell, uh, mm -hmm. the Commissioner of Energy of uh, Maui and Molokai, of course. Um, and we had uh, Todd uh, Tan Tanjo, Todd Kanja, Kanja, yep, uh, and uh, Chris um, Reynolds, Reynolds yep. of, of Maui Electric. Electric. Right. Uh, it was all really, really informative, and we got great footage. We're going to put it on OC16. A first-class trip. Thank you. For good, that. good. Well, yeah. I'm glad it uh, worked out. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. it's a really interesting place with a lot of interesting things going on right now. So. Yeah, we, we saw that, and we and we love to go to the neighbor islands because we have this whole world view of bringing the islands together and having one island know what the mm -hmm. in fact the uh, the guys uh, the commissioners and coordinators from around the counties are coming for a meeting at the end of the month oh. and they're going to compare notes about mm -hmm. energy and climate and all that stuff oh, really? okay. it'll be very interesting and fred is involved in in uh, organizing that in waikiki Fred's so, a good guy yeah yeah, yeah. Good and good it's job. good to see the counties get together that mm -hmm. way so jim you had a, a press release we wanted to follow well, up. It's more interesting than a press release. I <laughs> oh, mean, that's a news conference. That's the setup. Oh, you guys had a press release. Okay, well, yeah. all right. No, no, no. Let me reframe that yeah. question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're having a program about electrifying transportation, Hawaii, yes. which is a very important initiative. Yes. And you're having a meeting where everybody's going to get together, or everybody got yes, together we had already. A meeting, yep. The stakeholders about transportation and energy. Um, who was it? Where was it? What happened? Tell us. Well, we had, we did, we had the first uh, workshop of its kind last week. We got about sixty people together to talk about how we move forward on electrification of transportation, not just EVs, but but also talking more about uh, public transportation, heavy equipment, trucks and buses. There's a big push on the mainland now. A lot of delivery fleets are starting to switch over to electric, and so. The, the purpose of the meeting was to really try to get people in the room together who could talk about, okay, we've, we've kind of gotten past the original uh, hurdles with, with EVs and getting people to accept them. We have the second highest rate of adoption after California of EVs. So uh, people are kind of getting over the range anxiety as cars are now coming out with longer range batteries. So what are the issues for the utility in terms of infrastructure, being able to support people charging, what are the public policy issues, there was a lot of discussion about the potential for the tax break that the, the feds give right now, there's some discussion about uh, getting rid of that, um, how can we make uh, you know EV ownership continue to be appealing, and also what, what's in it for, again, businesses, public agencies, we had somebody from the city and county there talking about the electric bus that they're going to have for a pilot program here. So there's a lot of really, we had people nationally from Ford and Lyft and Proterra and oh, some great. other. everybody. Wow. Yeah, great. so it was, great. yeah, it was, it was, it was really good. And people were very enthusiastic. And it's kind of one of those, I, I guess. Spirited conversations. Yeah, spirited and also kind of rare uh, instances where everybody's really together with the understanding that this is a worldwide phenomenon. I mean, this is a global shift that is happening away from internal combustion vehicles and equipment. And Hawaii is perfectly positioned to take advantage of getting aligned with, with that worldwide global shift. We're not the tail end of it. We're, we can be right in the middle of it. Maybe so, even a leader. Maybe it? even a leader. Yeah. Some interesting talk about autonomous vehicles oh, yeah, and, yeah. you know, 
that yeah. was so, a big thing. Right. Yeah. 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 So it was really people were very, very engaged. It was, it was a good conversation. So it's one of what nine workshops you're doing? Yeah, uh, <laughs> we just started with this one, and we're gonna we're gonna keep going. See how it goes. Okay, great. Yep. That's fabulous. Yep. What was the biggest takeaway from from Good that? Good question. I mean, you know, so where? What is the next step, or what is the next session, or what 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 came out of it? Do you think? I think one of the one of the bigger takeaways was the uh, the understanding that I think people have or are starting to have about how the electric vehicle infrastructure fits in with the entire grid. How it, if we do this right, this can be a great thing because we want to have people charging their equipment and their cars during the day when we have all this solar available that we don't want to waste. We don't want to have everybody going home at 7 o'clock and charging up 25,000 electric vehicles. That's <laughs> right, not right, a good right, thing. Right. So, but if they do it during the day and there are incentives and there's, they, we make it easy, maybe with mobile workplace charging, that it can really help the grid be stable and also, frankly, allow more renewables to come on uh, because there'll be a place to put that energy. I'm really impressed how Hawaiian Electric has bellied up to this issue. You put in charging stations of all kinds all over the place and you continue to do that. Uh, and you support this. You organize a program like this. You, you, you talk it up. You create incentives. Um, and it's the nod that really makes a difference. So here's the utility coming around saying, you guys ought to do this. It has a tremendous effect on the community. So uh, really, it's beyond the call. It doesn't necessarily earn you one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for recognizing that. <laughs> some, some, but some. you're doing a community thing here. This is really valuable. Yeah. Well, we, we, we think so. We think it can be one of those rare things that's a win-win for everybody, you know, yeah. the individual customer, uh, yeah. for the, the community, and, and, you know, for all of us. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jim. Thank you for coming. Hey, well, down. thanks for your interest as yeah, always. It's always you. good to see you yeah. guys. We'd so like to see, see you more again charging soon. Charging stations too. More, <laughs> more charging, charging stations. stations. <laughs> okay, we'll work on it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we'll take a short break. We're going to go to our next guest, uh, uh, Marvin Wayne-Canseo from Hawaiian Electric. Oops, Hawaiian. Oh, please. Hawaii, it's energy. Hawaii, Hawaii energy. energy. Yeah, well, you know, it's a lot of people. Yeah, we're all, it's all one big energy. ohana here, one right? One big ohana. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Aloha, Jim. Thanks for coming by. Come anytime. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at three o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way. There's got to be solution. How to make a brighter day. What do we do? We've got to give a little love, have a little hope. Make this world a little better. Try a little more. Hard and See something? Yes, okay. videos are basically. Okay, we're back, we're live, we're here together, all together, one big family, right? <laughs> yes. That's Sharon Mori Walker over there. She's, she's a co-chair, co-host of everything. <laughs> <laughs> what are you drinking? <laughs> this is Marvin Buencanseo uh, from Hawaii, uh, Hawaii Energy. Energy. Did I get that right? Uh, that Hawaii Energy. Oh, no, it's yeah. fine. That's oh, perfectly you're, fine. You're everywhere, Marvin. That's yeah. why and I'm we work closely here. with... Hawaiian Electric. And yeah. everybody else. And everybody else. So, you know, no, there's no problem with that. <laughs> we we love Hawaiian Electric. <laughs> so, Marvin, you know, <laughs> word has it, it's kind of just gossip, but word on the street is that in, in a week's time, we'll be right smack in the middle of Thanksgiving. You know, isn't that <laughs> wonderful? <laughs> you, know, you know, check your calendars. No, but really, I mean, yeah, uh, first of all, how did that happen? 2017 just evaporated. Evaporated. Yeah. Holy moly. But, yeah. you know, we are entering the holiday season, and Thanksgiving is almost upon us. And, uh, you know, it was just, it's a nice time for us at Hawaii Energy to really be thankful for uh, the folks who we help, who are helping others. You know, there are members of our community, the nonprofits I'm talking about, of course, that, you know, take the time to help our underserved and those who just need a little bit of a lift, but who helps the helpers? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, we want to thank all those who give the major contributions. I mean, those who give money to and funds for these programs, they, they would 
well, they wouldn't survive without that stuff. But in Hawaii Energy, you know, we also uh, make sure that we, as best as we can, take care of these, these places. And one I'm talking about now is Honolulu Habitat for Humanity. Yeah. We recently finished a retrofit of their facility in uh, Kalihi. Their, re their restore is what they call it. It's their uh, second-hand, if you will, store to, to help those, you know, trying to build homes. And they raise money so that they, too, can build homes for others. Uh -huh. And we'll get about a little bit of videos. So we we'll all take a look at the retrofit and, and hear from the folks involved with uh, with helping Honolulu Habitat for Humanity. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's great. great. I, 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 I was going to tell Jim that we we uh, revisited Molokai in the trip uh, last Thursday, and uh, we saw you know some of the mm, people, and uh, they are very appreciative of things that Hawaii Energy has done yeah. for them. Uh, you guys have laid a, a big impression on Molokai. Well, that's great, because we did just finish the latest chapter of the Hui Up program, yeah. <clears throat> where we are able to deliver uh, at, at, a, at a cost. It wasn't uh, all free, but at a cost uh, to $250. We, we recycle their refrigerator, give them a new one. Uh -huh. But the difference with the nonprofits that we help is we sure. take care of everything. And mm -hmm. when it, not necessarily that we pay, but we have our contractors also volunteer their help or they donate the goods needed, like the lights and stuff like that. So uh, for Habitat, Home Habitat for Humanity, uh, the bill would come about more than $11,000 for the total retrofit. Mm -hmm. But you provide that uh, yeah. through, wow. uh, through not only our program, but through our contractors and all the workers. Right. And collaborate. Yeah, it's right. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like so. so if I'm a, a contractor or an ordinary person, um, and I want to find out more about this program and what the benefits might be for me. Yeah. Where do I look? Mark? No, come to our website. Come to our website. Um, and we just revamped it. So it's, 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 but do they look it's snazzy. Like it well, you just go to our homepage and over the menu it'll say HawaiiEnergy.com. Dot com. See, that's a good name. Yeah. That's easy to remember. <laughs> Write that down. It's going to be a <laughs> final exam. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you can't pass this exam. You're in real trouble. Yeah. Well, we have it for uh, residential uh, product, you know, homes as well as uh, large it's companies. Companies. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, Marvin, as we go closing the end of the year, can you give us just a moment on how the year has been and what you plan for next year at Hawaii Energy? Actually, the, the year's been great. Uh, we've been able to help a lot of uh, families, help a lot of uh, companies and hotels. And In fact, the uh, one we just visited recently, we'll be highlighting later, is the brand spanking new uh, international uh, marketplace. Hmm. It's beautiful. Oh, you yeah, yeah, visited yeah, it? yeah. Oh, it's great. But, you so know, what did you do? They did a good job of all the LED lights. Oh. It looks terrific. Their chillers are upgraded. I mean, then mm. they, we encourage a lot of the new builders to do what they did, which is it was built into the design. It was built into uh, the plans. And that's the best time to attack mm -hmm. energy efficiency. The cheapest way yeah, to do exactly, it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Except some people get um, <laughs> put off by the idea that it's a little more expensive up front. But when you, the long run. over the long run, with oh, the energy sure. savings. The savings, yeah. yeah. Well, at the end of the day, I think you guys have done a lot to train people, to educate them about that very principle. Yeah. And as time goes by, at least in my observation, more people understand that. Mm -hmm. they, they understand a step in time saves nine. They understand yeah. that you know, to do efficiency is really has all kinds of secondary benefits. So good for you for having done that. You know, directly and indirectly, you've changed public opinion on this issue. Well, it's good to hear. I appreciate and small that. small businesses, too. Right? Yeah. Small in fact, businesses. we just ran into uh, Jane Sawyer in the elevator, you and I. Yes, we did. And uh, she and I are going to get together. With, she's with the United States uh, Small Business Administration. Mm. Uh -huh. And, uh, yeah, we're going to talk story about how we can do even more for Hawaii small That's businesses great. in yeah. teaming up with the federal government. Because they're the ones who really do need help in yeah. terms yeah. of, this, know, this goes again for the basic principle is you never know uh, what's going to happen on an elevator. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Marvin. Thanks for coming good. Down. Great to are talk to you. Watch, I'm going to watch something. Oh, we got a movie? Yeah. Yes. Okay, movie. Wait, Let's stop take everything. Let's movie. Let's take a look. <laughs> Let's see the movie. <laughs>
and the things that we don't have, the scissor lift to get up to this, you know, ceiling heights and just from start to finish they've been a huge impact for us and an awesome partnership. Nonprofits, they they don't have the knowledge or the capability or the time to do all these types of things or the yeah the, or the capital to do all these retrofits. So I like to as much as possible help out the nonprofits and you know see what Hawaii Energy can do for them. We love to help out um, organizations actually. So we work with nonprofits um, during Christmas time and we give out school supplies and baby bags to unfortunate um, children and babies and then um, we work with different organizations so we thought why not help out another organization Habitat for Humanity and um, we just you know we really appreciate what they do for the community and we wanted to give something back to them. I can already see the impact that it's brighter and lighter that's better for our customers, it's safer, it showcases our products, and it's every month knowing that our electricity bill is going to decrease is, is perfect. explain what that was all about. Well, I was, as I mentioned earlier, that project would have cost $11,000 for Honolulu Habitat oh, Institute, okay. So, okay? But since then, since they flipped on the light switch after all that was done, uh, each month they save about uh, close to 800 kilowatt hours a month, but it was $210 a month. Oh. And so that comes up to be about $2,500 a year. Wow, you could That's make a, that a, back in no time. Yeah, right? a 31% reduction in energy uh, wow. usage. So, you know, again, uh, giving back to uh, Honolulu Habitat for Humanity for all the work that they've done. We do it for other nonprofits as well. If, all, if folks out there, give oh. us a call, visit our website. But, uh, you know, there's energy savings to be had. We're going to make sure that you go and get it. So, yeah. so nonprofits only, or does that no, well, government? We have, well, we have different programs for different sectors, no so doubt like about it. So, like a government that helps the uh, community? Well, that we, well, for example, uh, we work closely with the city and county of Honolulu. Uh, that's our another most recent one where they've taking the steps at various buildings to, uh, you know, retrofit. retrofit. Yeah, mm -hmm. and here come the incentives. Uh, city council has to approve the, the expenditure, but of course it's the done deal. I mean, it's obvious, yeah. mm -hmm. and there you go. That's but great. yes, yes, we do help. Good. We, we, we have yeah, little yeah, silos yeah. for each one, but yeah. we're, we're bound to find the right package okay. for the right sector. Thank you, Marvin. Very, Very good. good to have you here. Yeah. Great work on the video. A very happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. We'll see you guys. We will right. be more energy efficient. Very good. <laughs> cooking our turkey. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back to talk to John Cole. You'll see. <laughs>I told you we'd have John Cole back, and former John. PUC commissioner and a specialist at HNEI. Too. He was a consumer advocate. Consumer advocate. <laughs> yeah, he was I mean, everything. we could go on. We don't have enough time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> running short. So, John, uh, HNEI, that stands for Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. Institute, right. Okay, and it's, it's embedded in the university. Yep. Um, it's very important to energy because you guys do research, but there's more to it. Uh, so can you tell us 
how the evolution is going. Oh, right. HNEI, I, I mean, we do a lot of research on specific technologies. We have solar research, um, anaerobic digestion, biomass, a whole bunch of different areas that folks do research in there. But um, we've been shifting a lot of focus into integrating things into the electric system, like the variable renewable energy, which is presenting a lot of challenges to our systems here in Hawaii. So what we've been trying to do lately with our, our policy team and, and some of our other resources at the Institute is to help do some independent analyses of, of the electric systems and try to inform decision makers like the PUC with those analyses. Mm. So we're calling this show HNEI, <laughs> Moving Beyond Technology. I thought that was a really provocative <laughs> title. Yeah. Hold on, I'm going to ask you what that means. What does it oh, mean? What I mean is you can, you can have a lot of great <laughs> technologies, but they need to all work together or be integrated into a system that works efficiently and cost effectively, hopefully, yeah. for everybody. So that's a lot of what uh, my work has been. I've, I've been managing a lot of projects that model the utility systems, grids, and generation, and looking at you know increasing levels of variable renewables like solar and wind, and the challenges that brings to the utility systems grid, and then looking at mitigations or how those challenges can be overcome, and, and making reports public, and eventually, Sometimes the utility takes those recommendations. There have been times where the PUC kind of had to twist their arm to take recommendations. Um, but we, we try to provide some independent analyses to help inform you know, the decisions that are being made as we transition toward more renewables. So it's actually is integrating <laughs> various technologies which people may not realize can work together, can be synergized in some way to, to perform some larger task. And this is surely so in connection with the with the, the improvement of the grid, which you have so Definitely. many technologies and so many issues about putting all the pieces together. And, and really there isn't anybody, aside from you guys, who can say, well, you got this technology over here, we got this one over there, and this is this company wants to sell you this, and this company wants mm -hmm. to sell you that. So how do you, you know, put them together? This is a really important question. I would call it HNEI <laughs> moving toward technology leadership because you're really identifying what technologies are going to be leading you know the group of technologies right i mean i mean there's a lot of stuff out there new new technologies and and new businesses coming in like through you know the entrepreneurs and and, and the accelerators and things like that who have technology ideas, but we have to make sure they all can integrate into the system. Yeah, I'm forming a company, doing some yeah. entrepreneurial thing. I'm dedicated yeah. to my company, my idea, my technology, and I'm not necessarily, I mean, I, I could, yeah. but I'm not necessarily interested in integrating mm -hmm. that with somebody else's. Right, and how it all works together. And the yeah. utility is definitely dealing with that, and they get a lot of pitches from these technologies, as HNEI does, you know, for technologies that we're not necessarily looking at or developing ourselves, but we get people coming to us and asking us you know, how this might fit in. So that, that's part of our role as we see is, is helping to integrate not only the new technologies, but the wind and solar as, as the levels increase, present more and more challenges of trying right. to figure out how all that can work together and keep things reliable and stable. Yeah, this could be pretty sophisticated. If I were utility, John, I'd be reading your reports voraciously. <laughs> That's what I would be doing. Well, I, I hope <laughs> they are. I think they do. We, we actually work with the utilities when we do our modeling and, and and not only the utilities, but the PUC and other stakeholders and experts as we develop scenarios, as we get initial results, we get together and they help us review it. And, and so we make them part of the process. So we're making sure as HNEI, we're not right. missing it's stuff not and, we're, and we're trying to do things that are of value to the right. community. And, and they the don't have, they don't have the, uh, <laughs> uh, the flex that you have. They don't have the scientific resources perhaps that you have. Yeah. So I want to ask a question on behalf of Sharon, or maybe suggest it to Sharon <laughs> to ask you a question. <laughs> Give us an example, okay, of a problem and the disparate technologies and the solution. You do not have to name names. However, if you do name names, we will be very appreciative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to pick one that from a few years back, we did a modeling study with GE on, on Maui, and they have a lot of wind, as you know. Um, and we made a recommendation in one of the, our reports that um, if they changed how they operated their fossil fuel burning units, 
you know, maybe put their minimum runs down a little more and didn't produce as much power with those units um, that they could get a lot more wind on, on their system. And, and less curtailment. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and they didn't do that initially. And eventually, in a rate case decision, the um, Public Utilities Commission kind of tweaked them a little bit on their rate of return and, and told them to implement some of these recommendations. And they, they did tweak the operation of some of their thermal units that allowed for um, almost no curtailment for a time. Um, eventually, the curtailment rose again, but that was because of the explosion of rooftop PV, which is not controllable by the utility. Which is a, so, which is yeah. a, co a competitor to wind in, <laughs> exactly. in its own way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so they started curtailing a little more as that went up, and, and now the curtailments kind of dropped again, and that is due to less thermal generation on the system since the HCNS um, plant that oh, they were yeah, buying yeah, yeah. electricity from closed down. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, one thing that strikes me is very interesting. So you run the PUC, now you're sort of on the other side, the other quarter, corner of the ball field. <laughs> <laughs> and you can actually help the PUC by making yeah. these, these reports and suggestions um, in public. To, yeah. in, by the way. And, and part of being on the, the PUC, at least most of the time, is um, the utility has, you know, they, they have to do all these studies and, and analyses to to kind of bring forth projects or planning proposals and things. But at the PUC, that's kind of all you have as far as deep analysis. Um, there's other stakeholders that say things about that or complain about that, but you don't really have much beyond that to go on. So what h &E is hoping to do is to provide some of that technical analysis that's independent from the utility. And it may say the same thing. It may say something different or suggest different alternatives, but it's something independent mm -hmm. and that we want to add value to the decision-making yeah, process. Yeah, yeah, and you have the resources to do it from a scientific point of view. Yeah. We call it scientific methodology anyway, plus, you know, the, the scientists available to you. And I know you have some very classy scientists. There. We've met <laughs> them. Well, <laughs> yeah. you brought some in law, maybe, you know, several months back. <laughs> anyway, I mean, you know, I think this is an interesting <clears throat> twist because we have arrived, you know, our examination here, on Hawaii, the state of clean energy is, you know, where is it going? How is it moving? Is it meeting expectations? And who is playing on the field? And who is participating in what way? And, and so forth. And, you know, to me, this is very important that we start putting the pieces together. It's like a grand puzzle. You know, some kid playing with uh, Legos, by the way, would love mm -hmm. to see all, <laughs> all these various factors and, you know, facilities and pieces of equipment come together. And, and now we're at a place you know, where it gets more sophisticated, it's more difficult, um, there's more mm, demands made on the, uh, on the, uh, you know, the outcome, um, and we really have to focus on the technology and, as you said, the integration of technology. So kudos yeah. to you for that. No. This is good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. no. This is good. I mean, we'll we've definitely you. made... We'll be watching you. We've made such great <laughs> progress, but, I mean, we've got so much further to go, and it's only going to get more difficult and more complicated. So. Yeah, it is. <clears> I'm, I'm sure that's true. On the other hand, when you have all these pieces and you bring them all together, um, what you have is, uh, is a notable achievement in a laboratory, Hawaii, the laboratory of energy, you should change the name right. of the show, Hawaii, <laughs> the laboratory of energy, which the world can see, and it makes us all the more a leader. So HNEI becoming really central in that whole effort by doing, by moving to this integration And idea. it's bringing everybody together to the table. I yeah, think yeah. before, you know, it was all in silos, yeah. and now the, the conference that you have, the, mm -hmm the stakeholder thing that you have um, with HECO that, that John is involved in. I think it's, it's that kind of conversation. As um, Jim Kelly earlier said, with transportation, everybody coming together, then you could see mm -hmm. you know, how you do integrate. I mean, if you don't have all the pieces, it's hard to integrate, yeah? Exactly. So. Yeah. <clears throat> well, good. And good for your work on the forum. I think the forum is sort of sets a pace in its own way about having good, clear conversation, good, clear comparison, comparing notes, and um, about doing it you know, outside of silos. And I think we're developing a kind of culture in the energy community, don't you agree? Where people know each other, they're able to talk to each other, they're able to you know, get out of the silos and make sort of, uh, I don't want to use the word consensus, but make a kind of common conclusion about which way is best, and mm -hmm. and and scientists always have you know an angle. I mean, a, an advantage on that, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. And and there's different levels of, of 
technology, um, I don't want to say confidence, but understanding. So we need to cut across all of those and communicate where we're trying to go and the reasons why and, and the, the trade-offs that are going to have to take place to, to all levels. I mean, the technical guys can sit down and talk about it and understand it, but it, sometimes it's a challenge to make it understandable to those that aren't as deep into it as us. So I mean, we try to do that type of thing as well. I feel that Sharon's going to ask you another question now. <laughs> uh, well, basically, it's always the challenging question. What, what basically, in, in terms of what you've done so far, where HNEI is, what do you see as the, the, the most, I guess, the, the biggest challenge in terms of really making this integration happen? I mean, you've brought people to the table. What's the next step forward, do you think, in the coming year? For H and EI or H &E overall the state, in, in the, the state, state? <laughs> like where H and EI is seeing the integration, where the, mm -hmm. the the touch points are, and what what is the challenge for getting to the next level? I, th I think bringing everything together, just the whole integration part, and in some of the meetings I've been at today and tomorrow are about um, integrated grid planning, which would bring in the distribution side and all the rooftop solar and forecasts for that and energy storage and other resources that are out there in homes at the end of the lines and being able to bring that into the planning as well because people are going to do what they're going to do you know but it all has to work within the system so and for I mean, the benefit a, of the consumer so yeah you definitely need that. Yeah. yeah well thanks for doing that thanks for coming sure. down sean we want to check in with you from time to time and the question i thought sharon was going to ask you <laughs> Kind of a okay, closing please. question. Oh, I think this is the question I thought, Sharon. Could. <laughs> if I want to know what you guys are doing at HNEI, if I want to know about your projects and your investigations and your successes mm -hmm. and your relationships with other stakeholders in the in the in the landscape, where do I look? Do I just call you up? There must be some other you way. You could. We do have a website. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <It's> website. <just laughs> Hawaii.edu/hnei. Okay. And it has all our reports and some you know recent news and. and projects and there's a lot of menus you can play with there so. okay and i also want to thank john because he's done a lot in terms of looking at this integrated planning uh what who all the actors are and and having a better view of you know how to do energy plan or how we can better do energy planning so i think that's still an initiative that he's been helping the forum on and yeah. leading the forum charge on so thank you're you. probably going to thank him for that, for appearing on the show, then you're going to say farewell to our viewers. Am I right? Oh, yes. <laughs> and thank, thanking John and thanking um, the viewers for being with us. And, and uh, until we see you next time to continue the leadership <laughs> series for November. Aloha. Aloha, you, you guys. <laughs>